Welcome to the Sunday Word, our virtual church gathering from the Salvation Army in Bargoyd. It's fair to say it's been a very hot week and the sun has shone. So I thought we could start our time together with a song about the sun, S-O-N, the Son of God, Jesus. So let's sing together about the light of God's love shining. It's song number 261 in the songbook. 261 in the songbook. Shine, Jesus, shine. <laughs> Let us pray together. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we, we open our minds, we, we open our spirit and soul for you today. Uh, thanking you, Lord, for your love and your light and your eternal blessing that unites us in, in Christ Jesus. Lord, you guide us with your mercy and you lead us to peace. Father God, we come into your presence now and our hearts are calm in a state of silent surrender as we trust in your love and guidance. Lord, we thank you for your creation and for all blessings that you were constantly giving to us. We thank you for the, the brilliant thoughts, the, the sweet moments, the, the loving feelings that we receive through the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, may the light of your wisdom enlighten the minds of all people may your truth shine in all our thought souls and your your love 
flow through all of our hearts so that all people can enter into this world of love and realize that all life comes from you and we look forward to the time lord when we bow down together with everyone all people as one and praise your holy name lord we pray that you will strengthen all the leaders in the world strengthen them lord to embrace the principles of brotherly love charity and truth and for them to act on your behalf may they unveil the divine plan so that all may see and bring bring it all to action lord lord spread your blessings on all of us and may the spirit of christ fall afresh on us today fill us anew and allow us to be worthy of your calling on our lives and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
read with me from uh, the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, and I'm going to start reading at verse 16 to 19. Ephesians chapter 1, 16 to 19. I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe and we ask God to add his blessing to that reading and to help us understand it we're going to sing together song number 270 in the Salvation Army songbook it's a prayer for us to sing before we look at the word this morning and it quite simply says this open the eyes of my heart Lord Let's sing together. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. 
Our text is taken from the book of Ephesians. It's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It's Paul speaking, and he says this. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to live a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Wow! what a great passage of scripture paul urging begging pleading all believers that's you and me and the ones in ephesus urging us to walk worthy of our calling in jesus christ and in describing that walk in those couple of verses he discusses its call then and the characteristics of it and, and the cause of that calling. In the very first verse of this chapter, it happens frequently in Paul's letters. Paul, once again, refers to himself as a prisoner of the Lord. He does it a lot, doesn't he? He reminds people that he is a prisoner he mentions his imprisonment he seems as if he just wants to gently remind his readers that he knows the worthy Christian walk can be costly one and that he has paid a considerable cost himself because of his obedience to the Lord and Paul makes no apology for, for pleading for urging begging whatever word is being used in whatever translation, it's the same thing, urging people to do what he knew was right. Paul was not giving suggestions to the Ephesians. He was offering up to them divine standards. Standards that fittingly corresponded to being children of God. Paul, he never exhorted on a on a take it or leave it basis. He just couldn't rest until all those given into his spiritual care walked in a manner worthy of the calling to which they had been called. God's gracious calling not only bestows great privileges on them, but it also carries solemn responsibility. Now, walking worthy. Walk is frequently used in the New Testament to refer to daily conduct and then the word worthy. We know what worthy is, don't we? For example, uh, a person who worthy of his pay is one who does a day's work corresponding with his wages, doesn't he? Yeah, He's worthy. Well, the believer who walks in a manner worthy of the calling to which he or she have been called is one whose daily life corresponds to his high position as a child of God and a fellow heir with Jesus Christ. This is a situation in where one's practical living matches their spiritual position. Now, Paul says, always be humble. That's what he says, doesn't he? Always be humble. Be patient with each other, he says. Make allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourself united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. This description of, uh, of a worthy walk, always being humble and patient and making allowances, keeping yourselves united in the spirit binding yourselves together with peace 
all those things that we should do to show that we are worthy of our calling yeah do you think they are how the problem is is that our human minds and inclinations they seem to like point us in the opposite direction however however no it's only the holy spirit and our scripturally renewed minds that will direct the actions down the worthy walk path now if we haven't got all of that yet don't worry about it because you're not on your own i want you to turn with me to philippians chapter 3 philippians chapter 3 and i'm going to start reading from verse 12 just three verses if you haven't got your bibles with you just listen philippians chapter 3 verse 12 and what we're going to do is going to see what paul says about his sorry about his worthy walk he says this i don't mean to say that i have already achieved these things or that i have already achieved perfection but i press on to possess that perfection for which christ first possessed me no dear brothers and sisters i have not achieved it but i focus on this one thing forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead i press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which god through christ jesus is calling us my friends okay this is me talking now my friends the, the the calling to which you have been called is the lord's sovereign saving effectual call to salvation our calling is a high calling a heavenly calling and we read about that in ephesians chapter sorry in hebrews chapter 3 i'm going to i'm going to read you a verse now one verse hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 bear with me therefore brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling fix your thoughts on jesus whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest yeah and also we read in the book of timothy the second book of timothy chapter 1 verse 9 says this for god saved us and called us to live a holy life he did this not because we deserved it but because that was his plan from the beginning of time to show us his grace through christ jesus you know in the new testament you know the church is made up of those people who were called out from the world you know, called out from darkness from damnation from paganism to become members of the body of christ people like me and you we myself my friends are the new testament church whether we wear epaulets salvation army soldiers church members adherents whatever we are the new testament church called out from darkness and damnation so what is our faithful determined response to the walk worthy of our calling what's our response now maybe we should read a little bit more the words of paul found in philippians chapter 3 verses 15 to 21 this is what it says let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things and if you would disagree on some point i believe God will make it plain to you but we must hold on to the progress we have already made dear brothers and sisters pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example but I've told you often before and I say it again with tears in my eyes there are many whose conduct shows that they are really enemies of the cross they are headed for destruction their god is their 
me just read that again because I've lost, I lost it a little bit there. Their God is their appetite. They brag about sinful things and they think only about life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we eagerly await for him to return as our saviour. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power which he will bring everything under control. You know, my friends, despite any failures, any past issues which may have previously caused us problems in walking worthy of the calling, let's just press on and become scripturally aware of our lives and how we live them let us all have a life of faith and press on to eventually become worthy of the calling to salvation remember paul said i urge you urge you to lead a life worthy of your calling for you have been called by God, always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourself together with peace.
Lord God, we pray that you will give us the time that we need to become worthy of your calling on our lives. And we ask that your Holy Spirit will keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and our minds focused on the things of heaven. Lord God, we pray this in the name of Jesus. Answer our prayers. Amen. Amen. Now, I do... I do hope that you have been called by God. Well, rather, I hope that you all realise that you have been called by God. All of you who are watching. That's the reason why we come together in praise and worship. That's why because we, we believe us. Because we have been called by God. Called to live as a Christian in the world that God has placed us. And so the challenge is, live your life worthy of the calling let's sing together our closing song we're going to sing it with the international staff songsters it's song number 321 in the songbook you might not know it not all of you might not know this one it's a, a song a salvation army song which says i dare to live a life of faith a life of challenge I dare to want to live like Christ, according to his will and way. So I want us to sing this like challenging song together in response to what we've just heard from the word about living a life worthy of the calling. I dare to be different. I dare to believe. Now, if you don't know the song, I promise you that you will before you get to verse 2, because it's easy song to, to, listen, to, to, um, to learn. Now, I want you to be singing away, and I believe that in the next few days you will also keep on singing this song. I dare to be different. Well, may the Lord richly bless you in the weeks ahead as you aim and pursue the life worthy of his calling. And I'll see you all in September. God bless you.